Good morning and what a wonderful Sunday to be here with you. So welcome to Center for Spiritual Living Palm Desert. I'm Dr. Laura Shackelford and I've already got a little sneak peek at some of Reverend Charles slides. So you don't want to miss this talk. And so before we begin the talk, we're going to go into our wonderful music. And today we have Harold Payne. Now you've seen Harold speaking with Reverend Charles before, and he's going to be back this week. So just enjoy this wonderful music presentation. Good morning. It's my pleasure to be with you virtually today at CSL Palm Desert. My only regret is that I don't get to play with your superstar band. Jerry Lynn and, and everybody uh, are just awesome and the best. So uh, hopefully very soon uh, I'll be able to do that. In fact, I'm optimistic about it. Because optimism is contagious. Say it loud and sing it strong. Optimism is contagious. Pick it up and pass it on. But hope is a place where one smiling face can make a difference. Where positive messages dance past the edges of doubt. It's a ripple, it's a rhythm, it's a movement, it's the beating of drums. Oh, and you can't help but move to its music when it comes. Optimism is contagious. Say it loud and sing it strong. Optimism is contagious. Pick it up and pass it on. Rocks can be smooth and tides can be moved by the moon. Armies disarmed and snakes simply charmed by a tune. Oh, it's a candle, it's a beacon, it's a comet, it's a constellation. Optimism is contagious Sit loud and sing it strong Optimism is contagious Pick it up and pass it on Oh, simply defined It's a state of mind Oh, do you want to stay in the dark or do you want to shine optimism is contagious say it loud and sing it strong optimism is contagious pick it up and pass it on optimism is contagious Say it loud and sing it strong Optimism is contagious Pick it up and pass it on Pick it up and pass it on hey, hey. Pick it up and pass it on Pick it up and pass it on You got it Pick it up and pass it on Pick it up and pass it on So again, this week at 10 o'clock every day, we have some wonderful events happening. So let me tell you what's going on this week. On Monday, Reverend Charles is going to be speaking with 
Ted Russell Camp, and he's an old buddy of his from Seattle. He's a wonderful musician, and I know Reverend Charles is really excited about this, so you don't want to miss this on Monday. And then on Tuesday, Reverend Charles and Jeffon Seely will be continuing their book study on how to become an anti-racist. They're on chapter 11, and that's at 10. And also on Tuesday, please join us for the Restorative Intention Circles. If you love the power of eight, you're gonna love this. And the, the Restorative Intention Circle complements those circle of eight. And if you want more information, please just go onto the website and see the banner for all the information and how to connect. And then on Wednesday, we have our sensational six, our six new reverends that always have such amazing and wonderful conversations. Join them. And then on Thursday again, Reverend Charles will be having part two of his discussion with Harold Payne. And then Friday, oh, Friday's a mysterious day. Where's Waldo? Well, Reverend Charles is going to be trying to find where is Dr. Joe? Where in the world is Dr. Joe? So you don't want to miss Friday for that event that's going to be taking place. And then also remember on Saturday, we have our meditation room at 10 and also our virtual prayer room that happens every Sunday at 11 o'clock. So there's something for everybody every day of the week. Thank you for being here. Thank you for participating. We always like to come together to share and know and be clear of why we're coming together, why we're providing these opportunities for us to be in prayer, hear the word and be educated. And this is what the mission statement is of Centers for Spiritual Living Palm Desert. Our mission, we are a dynamic, open and positive faith community that accepts all religions. Our mission is to awaken you to your divine nature, empowering you to create the life of your dreams. We are changing lives one heart at a time. Let's come together this morning in our spiritual practice to know the truth and be in the presence and remind ourselves of the presence of God that is always right where we are. Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in. Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in to the deepest kind of love to the sweetest kind of life get ready get ready my soul everything I've ever done and everything I've ever seen Everything I've lost or won And everything I've ever dreamed Has brought me here To this present moment here To this new beginning here and I'm seeing life so clearly now get ready my soul I'm diving in get ready my soul I'm diving in to the deepest kind of love 
love to the sweetest kind of life. Get ready, get ready, my soul. Get ready, get ready, my soul. As we continue to breathe in that presence of that spiritual practice, breathing in and reminding ourselves of the one presence and one life and one power of the infinite presence that is God that is in this time together. We breathe it, we feel it, and we know it from deep within. And from that place, we speak our word, knowing that throughout this time together, that as we have gathered, though virtually, we feel the divinity and the connection and the perfection of the infinite wisdom of God expressing right here in our time together. We receive it and feel it through the message of Reverend Charles that the words educate, inspire, and fulfill us to a deeper understanding of knowing that the truth of God that is within us, that essence of spirit that has always been there, flows forth through us and in our word and our actions and in our relationships. I just give thanks in advance for this blessed, sacred time that we have chosen to come together to remind ourselves that God is, I am. I release this word into the law knowing it has made it so right here in my life and in our life and the life of everyone present listening. And so we let it be, and so it is. Amen. Show me the way, show me the way, your love will light my way. Show me the way, show me the way, show me the way.
Shanti Om, Shanti So this is such an important part of our service because this is where you get to actively participate. And that is by supporting our center, our Center for Spiritual Living Palm Desert, so that each day we can bring you these incredible, uplifting spiritual messages that feed your soul, that keep you focused. So please, right there on the web page, there are so many different ways to participate in making a donation to the center and to a donation to yourself, to your prosperity, to your wholeness. So let's just take a second while you hit that button. And now let's bless that. Let's bless all that we have, all that we give, knowing, knowing that the universe says, yes, thank you. I need to give you more because you are giving so much more. So we're so blessed, so blessed for this opportunity to participate and to support Center for Spiritual Living Palm Desert. Thank you. Community, good morning. 
such a blessing to be back with you on another Sunday. Aren't we blessed in so many ways? The music of Harold Payne, the wonderful uh, meditation and, and, and that ritual with Reverend Brad and the prayer and all the ways that we're uplifted as a community that we get to come together each week, albeit virtually still, um, to share in community together. We're so blessed. I shared with you a couple weeks ago that the, the, the monthly theme for September in Science of Mind 365 by Ernest Holmes is expectancy and how we expect our good. And the first couple weeks um, th of this month in September, I basically went through the five steps of, of affirmative prayer, uh, um, recognition and unification, and then the following week, uh, realization, thanksgiving, and then release, letting it be, letting it go. And this week I wanted to share with you a little bit about this idea of seeing what you can't see. Different types of sight. Of course, we have our eyesight, the things that we can witness. We can look around and see our environment. We can take it in with our eyeballs. But then there's something, there's another level of seeing, which is a vision or that inner sight, that spiritual sight that guides us actually into seeing then what we can see in our physical environment. It's a formula. First, we see something with our spiritual vision, with our spiritual sight. And that, matched with conviction and expectancy, brings about what we experience in our world of effect and affair, how our relationships show up, uh, the, the status of our bank account, uh, the, the, the health of our body. And so what I want to focus on today is actually that spiritual sight, because what we always must do first is go to cause. Cause is where things happen. And we're going to get into this with a few points this morning, but I want to make sure that we're really clear on that. Cause is where things happen, not effect. Effect is like light. We see light, but uh, what, where it originates from, that light happened a long time ago. We talk in terms of light years. Like when we see a star, the light that we see from that star actually happened a long time ago, a long time ago. And it's the same thing with demonstration uh, in, in our physical world, it begins with spiritual sight. It actually, the things that we're experiencing in our life happened in cause a long time ago or some time ago, some time ago, because first we saw something we imagined into it. We had an idea and then it demonstrates itself in the word world of physical form. The range of our possibilities at the present time does not extend far beyond the range of our present concepts. As we bring ourselves to a greater vision, we induce a great concept and thereby demonstrate more in our experience. So Ernest Holmes says it beautifully there. As we bring ourselves to a greater vision. Now this is spiritual insight. This is the insight of going within and actually communing with the spirit of your own being the realm where ideas emerge, the spiritual realm, and planting those seeds. We've heard it probably many times, we're called to be spiritual farmers. And that is we plant our seeds, these ideas in the soil of truth, and what we know then is things demonstrate in some time, depending on how we nurture those seeds with water and sunshine and, and, and that spiritual food, sometime after that, then the seeds demonstrate themselves as corn or carrots or what have you. Same thing with these spiritual seeds. To actually see what you can't see yet, knowing that as you see it within yourself, it will have a tendency to demonstrate in your experience, when it's watered with the sunlight of your mind, with love, when it's, when it's, when, it, when it's watered with soulful uh, givingness, when you, when you give it the nutrients that it requires through uh, your love and connection to it, to, through um, um, nurturing those seeds, they will have a tendency to demonstrate in our experience. So the question we're left with in this moment is, what do you want to experience in your life right now? What are you interested in experiencing? What are you being called to stop right now and see so that you can see it demonstrated in your life? There's a Persian poet named Mahmoud Shabistari. He says it like this, lift yourself above time and space and become time and space. 
Leave behind this world and become a world unto yourself. Isn't that a beautiful invitation? Become time and space. Become cause. Leave be, lift yourself above time and space. That is the world of effect that we live in, that we're blessed to live in. That's where we, our, our relationships of love and care happen. That's where we get to spend money on a wonderful meal. That's a beautiful place to be. But in the realm of cause, this poet's calling us to become time and space so we can cause our existence, not just react to it. So that we can create our world. Leave behind this world and become a world unto yourself. You become a great generating station for the life that you desire. Faith is a mental assertion elevated to the plane of realization. One more time. Faith is a mental assertion elevated to the plane of realization. Chew on that. Just be with that for a little bit. It is beyond the mere quibbling or mumbling of words, for it identifies itself with reality in such a manner that reality becomes real to the believer. Can I get an amen? amen? Faith is a mental assertion elevated to the plane of realization. It is beyond the mere quibbling or mumbling of words. Understand that now. It's not just, just because you say some words doesn't mean they're going to demonstrate in your experience. Charged with faith, elevated to the plane of realization. Not just the mere quibbling or mumbling of words, for it identifies itself with reality. We're talking about faith here again. And faith is that seeing. It's that inner sight. It's that insight to see what you can't see yet. Faith goes beyond the mere quibbling or mumbling of words, for it identifies itself with reality in such a manner that reality then becomes real to the believer. Now look, we can w work with this blueprint backward as well. Look around your life right now. That's what you believe. This is what you saw before you could see it. The status of your marriage, the status of your friendships, the status of the health of your body. We can change whatever we want to by elevating our faith not just a mere wording of something or becoming a great wordsmith. It's so interesting to me so much when we talk about in, in, uh, in, in, in New Thought and with students that I would work with that sometimes they don't think, think their prayer sounded uh, a very good or somebody else prays so much better with me. I don't care what somebody's prayer sounds like. Do you believe it? This isn't a talent show. This isn't a contest to see what, so how eloquent we can be. This is a movement of consciousness. And you could say one word over and over and over again, health, health, health. And you either believe it, or you believe it, or you don't. It's not a talent show of words. It's not how well you can pray. It's how convinced can you become. How expectant can you become? To expect your good, to see your good, to see a healthy body, to see a healthy marriage, to see a healthy bank account, to see a, a, a book written, to see your creativity flowing out of you, to see it with your spiritual insight. That's faith, a faith that sets you free. A faith in something that you see before you can see it. Moving forth with bold conviction and spiritual authority, even in the light of no evidence, trusting absolutely that as you water those seeds, that as you allow sunshine to shine, sunlight to shine on those seeds, you will see them in your world of effect and form. That is how the equation of consciousness works. That's how consciousness works. Another Indian, uh, an Indian saint, Swami Muktananda, said it like this. I love saying some of these names. Swami Muktananda. 
As I gazed at the tiny blue pearl, I saw it expand, spreading its radiance in all directions so that the whole sky and earth were illuminated by it. It was no longer a pearl, but had become shining, blazing, infinite light. What's that invitation say to you? Put your gaze on some sort of tiny, it's, it's blue pearl, capitalized. Gaze upon some truth and watch as it moves from some, uh, 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 um, some object simply that you're gazing at and becomes a radiance unto itself. It becomes a, 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 a spiritual uh, sight to behold and becomes your experience, it becomes your reality. As I gazed at the tiny blue pearl, I saw it expand. Listen to this as a meditation. I saw it expand, spreading its radiance in all directions so that the whole sky and earth were illuminated by it. It was no longer a pearl, but it becomes shining, blazing, infinite light. Doesn't that feel good? It just feels good. Never let anything cause you to doubt your ability to demonstrate the truth. This is in lockstep with faith, too. Never let anything cause you to doubt your ability to demonstrate the truth. Conceive of your word as being the thing. Remember of the mumbling and the quibbling? Mumbling and quibbling is the opposite of this. Conceive of your word as being the thing. The word springs forth from the idea. The word springs forth from that spiritual insight. And then we conceive of our word as being the thing itself. Powerful demonstration. See the desire as an already accomplished fact and rest in pure confidence, peace and certainty, never looking for results. Because remember, where are we dealing? In the realm of cause, that's right. Never looking for results, never wondering, never being anxious, never being hurried or worried. See the desire as an already accomplished fact, resting in pure confidence, peace and certainty, never looking for results. Gang, when we're handling cause, when we're Resting in the realm of spiritual insight, the result has to take care of itself. I hope we understand that now. The result has to take care of itself. And we don't have any control over that. How it demonstrates and when it demonstrates and where it demonstrates, what we have control over is our embrace of the spiritual idea of something. An embrace of an extraordinary uh, relationship with another human being an embrace of extraordinary friendships, an embrace of financial freedom. Well, when we see that, when we conceive of that idea as being the thing itself, the result must take care of itself. Never wondering, never being anxious. Oh, how much can we all use some of that today, right now? Don't be anxious. Be set free by the power of your word, by the power of your spiritual insight, never being hurried or worried. Illumination will come as man more and more realizes his unity with the whole. But since the whole is at the point of inner mentality, we're saying the same thing in a bunch of different ways, inner sight, spiritual insight, inner mentality, it will be here alone that he will contact it. Illumination will come as man more and more realizes his unity with whole, with the whole. But since the whole is at the point of inner mentality, it will be here alone that you will contact it. Inner mentality. Inside. That's where it will be. There alone that you will contact it. Always in such a degree as one has spiritual sense, she realizes universality in her own soul. St. Paul said it like this, Surely you know that you are God's temple, where the Spirit of God dwells. Do you know that? Do we know that today? Can you accept St. Paul's charge? Surely you know that you are God's temple, where the Spirit of God dwells. 
We must know that. That's the first step of affirming something, of an affirmative prayer. Surely we know that right where we are, that God is and we are it. We are living expression of it. And from there we fly. From there we soar. From there we create. It is from there that we actually create world peace. Not out here. Not trying to manage the effect of things. Managing inner peace demonstrates world peace. There is no world peace if you're not at peace. Take care of what you can take care of right here and then move into the world as an illuminating, liberated soul interacting with others. We comprehend the infinite only to the degree that it expresses itself through us. Catch that. We, co we, we comprehend the infinite only to the degree that it expresses itself through us. So our life is a living testimony to the extent that we can comprehend the infinite. And what we're called to do is continue to extend and expand our comprehension of the infinite, thereby creating a greater world in which we live, an expanded world because we can see a bigger vision, insight. We comprehend the infinite only to the degree, to the degree that it expresses itself through us, becoming to us that which we believe it to be. We say infinite indwelling spirit within me. It's right where you are. It's right where I am. It's right where each one of us are. It's right where your pain is. It's right where your pressure point is. It's right where your fear is. It's right where your anxiety is. What we're called to do is have a spiritual insight and welcome that pain or that fear, that anxiety into it and actually transform it into something that gives life to something that expands and extends rather than contracts. Rumi says, my eyes see only the face of the beloved. What a glorious sight for that sight is beloved. Why speak of the two? The beloved is in the sight and the sight is in the beloved. Now you're going to get all these slides if you want them. When the email comes into your inbox, you can chew on some of these quotes. But isn't that wonderful? The beloved is in the sight. And the sight is in the beloved. So, what are you and I called to do? This week, today, right now, at the end of this sermon, at the end of this service, at the end of this talk, the end of this time together, what are you and I called to do? Dare three things I'm going to offer you. Dare to venture into your own soul and discover your truth. Your truth. How do we know it's truth? It sets us free. It's expanding and extending. Expansive. We feel life because of it. Emerge with that truth and then share it. Take time daily. Take time today to dive deep into your own soul. That's what I love about spiritual study, is you can see that these individuals took the time to be with their own soul, to dive into it and dance with it and make love to it and be with it and then emerge and share it so that you and I can each be lifted up by it. We're called to do that as well. Dive deep into your own soul. Find truth, the truth that sets you free. Emerge with that truth from that time of meditation, from that time of reflection, and then share it so that someone else's life can be lifted up in the same way that someone else lifted up your life. Number two, spend time daily turning your attention away from the world of circumstances to source and watch the cosmic dance take place. Turn your attention away from the craziness that we can see in the world. Turn it inward to that cosmic dance where source resides. We must spend time daily communing with our own soul. We must spend time daily communing within so that we go to that deep reservoir, that deep well of peace 
the deep well of joy. Drink from that well so that we're sustained. So we're not just operating in the crazy. We're actually operating in the peace and the sanity of the whole spirit. And then emerging with that. Number three, engage only in dialogue and conversation that brings forth life. Give birth daily to the world that you want to live in. Only engage in life-giving dialogue. This is the power of your word as well. Through the word we create because we're creating. The words that we use are emerging from our mouth based on an idea that we hold. And we begin to take a greater stock of the ideas that we hold by the words that are coming out of our mouth. So only if you're disciplined this week to only engage in life-giving conversation you'll see that the world that you create, that you perceive that you see, becomes brighter and lighter, more joyful and happier. Give birth daily to the world that you want to live in. You give birth daily to the world that you want to live in. So this is it, gang. This is what we're charged to do. Turn our attention inward to see now what we can't see yet. See what you can't see. Begin to create, develop, live into a new world, an expanded world, an extended world, a beautiful world, and step into that world and live it. Have an extraordinary week. I love you, and I continue to accept your love, and I charge you to make today the best day ever. Peace and love. So thank you for joining us today. Wasn't Reverend Charles' talk so inspiring, so wonderful? He's just hitting him out of the ballpark. So let us do a closing prayer now. So let's just take a deep breath in. I know that there is only one power, one divine life, one presence. It is that creative force and we are each and every one of us a part of it. It is expressing by means of me. It is expressing by means of you. So right now, let us plant those seeds. Let us plant those seeds of love, prosperity, joy, perfect health, peace, knowing, knowing that we are here at this magnificent time in humanity to plant these seeds for the present and for the future. So we relax, we relax in that knowing, knowing that life is unfolding magnificently and perfectly. And we send our love and peace to all those that are going through these fire experiences, knowing that it is all unfolding perfectly and that all is well, all is calm, all is unfolding according to divine plan. We send our love and our prayers to the firefighters that are fighting these fires, knowing, knowing that we're clearing the way for something new and magnificent to sprout and to grow and to blossom. And so we envision, we envision this world of beauty, this world of peace and love and prosperity and perfection, knowing that it is the truth. It is within us and it is coming forth into the world. And so I relax. I relax in that knowing, knowing the divine is always here with us. So I release my word into this loving universe that always says yes, knowing that it is so, knowing that it is done. And together we say, and so it is. Amen. Have a wonderful week, everyone. We'll see you all through the week. <laughs>